Now that we understand how security is implemented uh, in terms of its approach and SDLC, we are going to look into the security professionals within their, uh, within an organization, their responsibilities, and their hierarchy in terms of top management, that is the senior management and the information security team. So a lot of professionals are definitely required within an organization in order to support pretty much an information security program. Senior management is always the key component because they tend to drive how security is being implemented as well as managed within an organization. Without senior management, security tends to become an afterthought. Even in situations where there are security professionals within an organization, if there is no security leadership and security management, then they, each single um, team member tends to be siloed in their own processes and there's nothing driving the information security program in general. Information security team are not the only professionals meant to handle information security within an organization. Information security is an everyone's responsibility within an organization, including end users, every single one. But the information security team is usually responsible for creating an awareness within the organization so everyone contributes to ensuring a good security posture within the organization. For the senior management, there's usually a CIO. Lately, um, there is a move around integrating, uh, combining the CISO as well as CIO, but CIO is usually considered the most senior technology officer within an organization that's the chief information officer. And they are primarily responsible for advising senior executives, including board members and everyone around strategic planning and um, just technology, strategic planning, information, and everything within the organization as it relates to technology and information. Then there is the CISO, which usually reports to the CIO directly. And the CISO is responsible for assessment, management, and implementation of information system, information security within, and information security within the organization. The CISO usually drive the security program and the CIO drives the information in general, information program, how everything is going to be managed from information wise as well as technology. Then there is the information security team. And this could be a different variety of individuals with different titles coming together that we have information system security officer, we have system owners, we have system administrators. Um, ISSO and SO tend to fall with under um, pretty much security professionals. System administrators, we have security administrators, network engineers, network administrators, different title exist. But these are all a team of functional people who are technically experienced or experienced in um, compliance or whatever function it is, but they are usually experienced in one or multiple sectors required. And um, they tend to be the implementers. When senior management instructs, they implement. Every team shall have a champion. The champion is that person who always chairs the um, team and also drives the team forward. When it comes down to data as well as assets, a system could be the asset and the data could be the asset. There has to be a responsible person who is or there has to be an entity who is responsible for ownership of that system or data. Usually it falls on system um, senior management, even though they are not the ones that have day-to-day -day, um, responsibility of ensuring that 
the data or system is in a good posture, they usually own it. Then we have the data custodian or system custodians, and they are responsible for the information and system that process, transmit, and stores it. So if um, there is a certain data going back to Coca-Cola recipe, there has to be someone who is responsible for configuring the system that the recipe is being stored within. There has to be that same person is responsible for ensuring access or not based on instruction from the system owner or data owner. So the data owner says, give this person access or give this user an access. The custodian is the one to sit behind the system itself and configure that. The custodian is responsible for audits and, things, and just ensuring that day-to-day -day activities or day-to-day -day security posture is maintained around the data or system. Then we have the data users. Those are end users, which is such a role, could be information security role, could be just day-to-day -day role. And their roles are, is to access that asset, could be data again, could be system. Their job is to access it and use it towards achieving the company's goal or the organization's goal. And you will hear a lot of different titles and names, but most times the responsibility around that, uh, around the asset falls within these three, um, these three responsibilities, either owner, custodian, or user. Okay, and next we have pretty much the realm of security or rather the information security realm is usually debatable as whether it is an art field or a science field, considering there are a lot of different entities that come together to form or at least build the security posture around um, an organization. However, it is neither of art nor science alone. It is, there's this idea of security artisan that is based on the way individuals perceive system technologies and their abilities. And it kind of makes sense how a lot of people tend to think information security or rather cyber security are only technical fields, but they really are not. We just mentioned how the CISO is CISO and CIO are responsible for drafting policy and driving it. They could come from a policy background, could be lawyers. They do not need to understand, or they do not need to know how to do the technical aspect of implementation. They just need to understand the security controls and the need based on risk. Once they are able to identify that, they also belong to the security team. So yeah, information security could be an art. So because there is no hard or fast rules, nor many universally accepted complete solutions. That is, there's really not a single way to implement security. There is no defined way to implement security. No manual, it requires one's one's vision as well as one's capability to understand the needs based on risk, then um, information security is definitely a science. Deals with technology, a lot of scientific research goes towards building controls or tools that facilitate controls and even tools that are meant to do the hacking and all of that. A lot of things are around technology, especially within cybersecurity, network security, uh, malware analysis, antivirus. A lot of things tend to fall within technology. Could be a social sciences that has to do with the behavior of individuals. And this brings us to like social engineering where you can 
um, where one can definitely manipulate other individuals into getting a lot of information extracted from them. So that's basically a social science. It's a behavioral interaction with people. If their password is their dog names, you find a way to get the dog name. Um, so start with, oh, hey, do you have any pets? Yeah, I do. What do you have? I have a cat. Yeah, okay. Well, I have a dog. What's his name? Or what's your name? And from there, you just get their access. Uh, you get access to their systems or resources that they protect with that pet name. So definitely information security could be an art or sciences a combination of both when you think of it that way. But I would definitely go with it is a combination of everything, not just a single field. Okay. And this brings us to the end of chapter one. Um, we were able to cover <coughs> quite a lot. In chapter one, we understood when security, uh, computer security began with mainframes and how it evolved as a result of communication and networks and where we are today. <coughs> We understand that successful organizations need to build multiple of uh, multiple layers of security around physical security, operational, functional, communication, network, and all of that. We also covered and understood that information security must be managed in a similar uh, must be managed similar to any major system implemented in an organization using a methodology like SDLC or DevOps or SecOps, whichever one it is, there has to be a methodology that is being used to implement security, not just an, uh, as a patch up later after implementation has gone in place. We understand that senior management plays a vital role within information security. And finally, we also understood that information security is pretty much a combination of arts and sciences. And with that, that's the end of chapter one.